we are going through another episode of the policy times presenting unleashing india national development series this series is brought to bring comfort to the people from all dimensions of growth and development of the country to be a global leader in all aspects in which can india can contribute this particular episode is on high quality education through secured governance and for keeping up its leadership strategy as you can see that if you grow anywhere in the world today almost in 121 countries there are 35 million indians who are there all of them most of them have been who have come through education in india who come through the system of various uh, specialization which are taught in india and they all have become world leaders they have become world leaders in companies they have become world leaders in uh, politics they have become leaders in various cultural aspects they have become somewhere in sports we are still lacking we are not so good in sports other in all other aspects we are there as uh, global leadership qualities now these are all brought by india's education system because generally when we talk of india's education system always something which are not so good is being said which is not correct indian education system because of its complexity because of its number there always limitation it is not the perfect and it will never be perfect whatever we do whatever we try to do but we have to position ourselves properly because we are the world's largest number of youth population we have got almost 400 to almost 600 million anywhere between 20 to 30 if you can take as a youth so no country in the world has got that much of youth population that much of diversity of the various aspects of education but education has got its own drawback because education needs funding unlike other sectors where whatever money is put in the returns come reasonably quick in education if a person is educated the returns come after 20 25 years so naturally you know uh, there are ways in which the uh, education has to be seen is something different so secured governance comes in picture here there are two aspects of secured governance which we have to see in education always the previously educated person has to fund for the remain educated person as in the government fund yes government funding should continue we are not keeping it in lieu but that government funding will not be enough whatever we may do in terms of 5% 6% and all there is always a debate going on whether 5 or 6 even if you put 10% there is funds required to be far more because when we talk of almost 400 million um, uh, students to be educated it is something which is a mind blowing affair in terms of the money that is required so all the budget we are there should continue we are not debating that along with that few extra strategies has to be utilized for the uh, self sustained education system how does it work here all the students who have studied earlier every institute should be fully in touch with them and make them pay for whatever they have the thing not compulsorily voluntarily second which is more important than even the first is every education system should be allowed to have almost 20 to 50% of its space to be given on rent basis which again means if an education system or a college school anybody has got x amount of space 1 lakh square foot 50000 square foot it should almost double whatever is required that means if it has, if it wants 1 lakh square foot it should take 2 lakh square foot 1 lakh square foot it should give for it without doing any thing and this commercial space should be totally decoupled from the educational space which means there should be no common enter no common uh, this thing so so that education should never be vitiated by any commonality of place but that place should give enough rents to fund education every education institution should have enough flexibility to have more fsi today as per rule almost 20 is easily possible 20% to 50% should be government should give and second in this particular system in this second option second option the system is all the government department should be induced to keep their officers on a rental basis in education which will have multiple uh, this is good teachers will always be available whether it's election or whether it's anything and teachers should get integrated with uh, with many of the requirements of the government so that you know they are almost becoming a good uh, you know uh, avenue for the education to go well so that many of the education department should work continuously within that remaining space which is kept for uh, on rental basis 
So these two, along with you know whatever funds come from the other system, would make education go in a very very self-sustained and high highest level. So that today education does not mean only the degree. You know this century is for skills. Education has to come with a skill. Even if somebody has dropped out at 12th standard, he should have enough skills. He or she should have enough skills to cater to the world's requirement. The person could go and become a, 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 a technology specialist or a PhD or a, um, you know, a, a cultural specialist. Everyone should have the skill which keeps on changing where the demands are high. All should come as part of education, as part of the you know, skilling which should come along with education for that the funds will be provided by this dynamic approach in which along with the existing uh, funds from government and um, uh, fees which are taken, the alumni and FSI. These two will, along with, of course, we should have innovation center, we should have entrepreneurship center, which also will play a very big role in education becoming self-sustained and education growing into a different dimension, keeping up the requirement of the world's expectations from India as a think tank, as a global knowledge center. Thank you. Thank you.